Hi, this is your host Sapni Bhartia and we are almost at the end of 2020 and at the beginning of 2021. And today we have kind of a real wizard, uh, Tim Wagner, CEO and co-founder of India and also inventor of AWS Lambda. Tim, uh, first of all, it's nice to have you on the show. I would love to talk about uh, the prediction. I would like you to hold the crystal ball and tell us what things will look like in 2021. But before that, I would love to talk about why did you create the company? What problem are you trying to solve for the ecosystem? You know, I started the serverless division at AWS. And while that business has seen just you know, really tremendous growth, one of its perennial challenges has been this concern that you know, the services like AWS Lambda, you know, they only work on one cloud. Then as VP of engineering at Coinbase, I got to operate one of the world's largest production fleets of distributed ledgers, only discovered that existing blockchain technology has this fatal flaw. It's limited by the code and memory of a single machine. So about 18 months ago, I had this interesting insight. What if we took the best of each of these ideas to address the biggest problem in the other one? So I partnered with Shruti Rao, uh, who had worked with me uh, on the AWS Lambda team, and then she went on to run the business side of Amazon Managed Blockchain. And we turned this idea into a company that we named Vendia, short for Venn Diagram. What is Vendia? Uh, it's an enterprise grade distributed platform, and it helps customers share code and data in real time across multiple clouds and different companies. And we designed this as a solution to be simple to use and easy to deploy by bringing together the ease of use and that unlimited scalability that serverless is known for, but with the decentralization benefits of blockchains and distributed ledgers. And this way, enterprise IT can access and manage data easily, securely, and at scale, no matter where it resides. Our initial product offering, Vendia Share, targets AIML, supply chain, financial settlement use cases, and it helps enterprise IT address those challenges of working with distributed code and data when it spans companies, cloud providers, or technology stacks. We make it super easy to create those distributed applications from a schema so there are no coding skills required to get started, and yet it can still scale to hundreds of thousands of transactions effortlessly. Awesome. Now, it's time for you to grab your crystal ball and tell us you know, what predictions do you have for next year? And be, be, uh, be aware that I'll get you again on the show next year just to, to see <laughs> how many of those turn out to be true. Well, I've got three predictions for you today. Uh, well, let's, let's start with the first one, uh, Kubernetes. Kubernetes is painfully complicated, and it's a bit of a least common denominator technology. But it's got this great saving grace. It's cloud independent. And up until a few days ago, that placed it on the opposite end of the spectrum from a technology like, say, the one I helped develop, like AWS Lambda, which was a proprietary method for handling and running code in the cloud. But this year at reInvent, AWS had this watershed moment. They finally made serverless speak in terms of Docker images, meaning that all those standard tools and processes that work for containers and that kind of drove that cross-cloud container world, they now work on serverless. So I think you're going to see other clouds follow suit, effectively creating an industry standard that's 100% compatible with the way people work today with those container images. And that's going to be this huge challenge for Kubernetes because now all of a sudden, there's an easy button, a way to run code portably on any cloud without servers or containers and without having that vendor proprietary lock-in mechanism. I think it's going to be revolutionary for how uh, IT and developers think about building things and applications in the cloud. So that's number one. Prediction number two, coding and ops are getting smarter and safer through AIML. And as a result, the days of building a business around CICD and APM, they're going to be numbered. So why do I say this? Well, today, any enterprise worth its salt requires software makers to run static checks over their code for things like known vulnerabilities, right? And to have ops dashboards and processes to be able to, to respond to operational issues. But time is limited and people miss things. Whose time and attention isn't limited? Computers. And now it's not just telling Alexa to turn off the lights from your bed. Those AI and ML mechanisms, they're scanning code for patterns, they're correlating those with security issues. They're scanning an IT team's operational settings for vulnerabilities. They're looking at access patterns and operational logs. And you're going to start seeing the Fortune 500 begin to mandate that automation rather than people are used internally and from their vendors. So things like AWS's Code Guru and the DevOps Guru that was just announced, they're just the start. This is the beginning of like a tidal wave of change in how that's done across our industry. 
But that's not the, that shift in is exciting in its own right, but here's the even bigger picture. I'm calling time of death on deployment and CICD as a third party space. And here's why I think that opportunity is drying up because the hard part has never been about moving bits around. It's getting those bits to be as safe, secure, and well-monitored as possible. Even in the APM space, you see captive services like CloudWatch and AWS, originally a bit of a joke because it wasn't super good. Now it's turning into a serious service and it's getting better and better because these vertical solutions are starting to get tied into it. It's like a, an easy button suddenly to get all of those value adds around security. So if you're in the third party space in APM or deployment, time to come up with a plan B. Final prediction for 2021, and this one's near and dear to my heart, blockchain emerges from its trough of despair driven by these second generation technologies. So let's just say it, blockchain bombed outside of a brokerage like Coinbase. It's impossible to find enterprise companies or even late stage startups where distributed ledgers handle the most mission critical workloads. And why? Because behind all that fancy math, there's this huge problem nobody likes to talk about, which is that blockchains of today run all their code, store all their data on a single machine. They make lots of copies of it, but it's one machine. It's incredibly limiting. It's as if someone who had never seen a distributed system came up with the idea. And I'll let you in on a little secret. Developers at a place like AWS who know how to build distributed systems roll their eyes at those blockchains, those Gen 1 solutions, because they're such a dumb architecture. The poor performance, the limited storage, the clunky integration. It's kind of no wonder that enterprises sort of spat that back out again. But this is changing. Uh, Vendia's distributed ledger tech, for example, it's serverless, it's distributed as a SaaS solution, and it scales without limits. Just like all those services I built at AWS because it's powered by many of those services that I built. You're seeing a lot of innovative startups now coming up with these more cloud native, more scalable, more enterprise focused solutions that are solving these real problems instead of just navel gazing. Things like spanning data silos, building cross cloud applications, optimizing supply chains, doing cross party settlement. Uh, it's a really, really exciting space and it's finally getting real. Awesome. Thanks for, for sharing those. And I, I do think that, you know, that most of what you, not most, all of what you said is, 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 you know, very, very realistic. And that's the direction we are heading into. Now, let's also talk about Vindia once again. What is going to be the focus of the company in 2021? Yeah. Well, look, you know, we're, we're just getting off the ground. Um, we released Vindia Share this year, providing end-to-end -end solutions for transactions that span multiple parties and clouds. And our developer preview for Share is gonna be opened up to all developers starting in January. So we're really excited about that. Can't wait to see what people start to build. In 2021, we're also gonna be releasing our second product, uh, Vendia Virtual Data Lake, which makes it easy to share files across regions, accounts, and clouds, but with fine-grained control. It's the solution for stopping the bit suit problem in the enterprise. Think Dropbox, but where you never lose track of anything that you shared. We're also tracking against those three predictions I made as a company. Vendia is one of the foremost innovators in the distributed ledger space because we put a serverless supercomputer into every node. We're also soaking up some of that latest and greatest features from AWS and other cloud vendors to make the world's first SaaS powered cross-cloud plat cross platform for code and data. It's an amazing time to be in our industry and seeing these disruptive, disruptive technologies reshape decades old processes for the better. Tim, uh, thank you for, for talking to me today about, first of all, you shared your predictions, but also Vindia, what the company is doing and uh, what we should be looking at in 2021. And I would love to talk to you again in 2021, just to, to get you know, more updates on what you are doing with Vindia there. So once again, thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for the invitation and uh, we'll see how I do next year.